Hello everyone. So today video will actually generalize the concept of differential of a function from Rn to Rn. Uh, so let uh, f is a function from u to Rm where u is a open subset of Rn. and uh, p belongs to you. So now uh, we want to define derivative of f at a point p. So see, we know that from the calculus, if we have a function, from R or any open subset of R to R, then we know the definition of derivative of that type of function at some fixed point. So we start from there. So, so from there, we will get an idea how to generalize. So let's say, suppose uh, F is a function from a open set O subset of R to R. Let's say this is open is a function and uh, let's say p belongs to the open city we say okay of, of course uh, the derivative of uh, derivative of f at p is denoted by a test p and uh, it is given by it is given by basically a test p equal to so this is nothing but so limit so uh, okay of course uh, we'll uh, put the limit later so let me write it here so now it is defined so basically we will take the the res ratio of the functional value near p and the increase by and then we take the limit okay so limit extends to zero so this was the definition for derivative of a real value function defined on it open subset of r now this definition we will rewrite in a clever way and that uh, actually will give us an idea how to define the derivative of a function from open subset of Rn to open subset of Rn. So how we can write down this in a clever way? So this has many different forms. So let me write here that, uh, okay, of course we assuming that limit exists. Here we assuming, assuming that uh, limit exists. Because the problem that some function may not have limit at some point, but here we are assuming that this limit exists. Then that we call derivative of p, derivative of f at the point p and denoted by this. <clears throat> okay, so from now we will take in our mind that uh, the limit exists. So we denote by f test p, it is a real number and it will be the limit of this ratio. It stands to zero, f of p plus h minus f of p divided by h. <laughs> now this limit equivalently we can say that, uh, okay, from here we can equivalently say that, uh, right, so basically, okay, okay, so what we can say that we can say here that, that uh, basically that uh, limit, limit h tend to zero, f of p plus h minus f of p divided by h minus f dash p. This is zero. Now, so th this is zero mean that, uh, okay. So this mean we can define here that equivalently that uh, limit h tends to zero f of p plus h 
minus f of p minus h into f dust p divided by h. This value actually equal to zero. <coughs> Equivalently, we can say that limit h tend to zero absolute value of f of p plus h minus f of p. And remember, we can write these two statements are equivalent because of limit zero. If limit is not zero, then one side we cannot find. So I mean, if limit is zero, then this we can write. But suppose limit of the absolute value zero, then we cannot conclude that the limit of the original function will be zero, uh, will be the number. So if it is non-zero, then you cannot conclude that that limit will be the, you know, something like this. So if these two are not equivalent. This limit not equal to this limit always. It is only equal if the limits are zero. And here it is. <coughs> so for convenience, let me write it here that this step. So it is equivalently saying that limit h tend to zero f of p plus h minus f of p minus h into f dash p is mod divided by mod of h equals to zero. So now see here derivative part is basically this part given by this part right so if some function is differentiable at a point p this means this limit is zero so somehow you can think like this that this term f of p plus h minus f of p and this difference divided by this equals to zero so or you can equivalently okay so now let me write it here one thing that we are considering a function l let's say i call so l is a function i call it is lp so this is a function from r to r is given by basically by lp of any x equal to let's say we are taking that uh, x into f dust of p so then then clearly this is a linear map lp is a linear linear map <coughs> okay so basically see so what we are getting that so this is nothing but you can think this is a linear map when you thinking a is a variable so it's given linear map from r to r so this means the f is for function f is differentiable at a point p if there is a linear map r to r such that this happens, right? So this absolute value divided by this. And any linear map is from R to R is this form, right? So that's why, so, and it is naturally that uh, derivative mean the, if you have geometrically think, you are thinking, so suppose you have a car. So at a point derivative mean, you are taking the tangent line. So you are, approximate, you are approximating the car near the point P by the tangent line. So therefore, somehow from this concept, uh, you know, are useful in the higher dimension. You can think so, and the linear linear space means somehow it is given by a linear transformation. So something like this. Okay. So now we get that uh, from here, an idea that uh, that uh, using linear transformation, we can define the derivative of a function from an open subset of Rn to Rn. So here it is, basically. So, f is a function from a open subset u subset of Rn to Rn, okay? And let's say p belongs to the u. So, we say f is differentiable at the point p if there exists a linear map. So now remember, I am writing here, there exists a linear map, but later we prove that a linear map will be unique if it exists. Linear map L suffix P from Rn to Rm, such that, such that limit, you know, limit here, of course we take here the ratio that F of P plus H, this is a vector in Rm, and f of p also vector in rm now minus lp of h it is also a vector in rm so divided by this you take h 
now here problem the numerator part is not a number and denominator part also not a number so of course the numerator part not need to be a number but denominator part must need to be a number so this is the norm in rn let's say the norm in rn we are taking the standard norm and here we are taking the norm in rm basically so this is basically zero so take the ratio of these two and limit here of course we are taking h tends to zero so it is equivalently saying this norm tends to zero so if such linear map exists, then we call F is differentiable at a point P. So this is the definition of uh, differentiable of a function at a point. So now there is a theorem. So if uh, F U subset of Rn to Rm is uh, differentiable, at p belongs to u then 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 there exist unique linear map map having satisfying okay you can say the satisfying satisfying is called one so there is only one linear map appears so now that so if f is differentiable at a point p then it is denoted by so if f is differentiable at a point p then the linear map is denoted by then the linear map is denoted by L suffix P. Oh, oh sorry, the linear map is denoted by that the linear map we get to is denoted by either F test P or you can say that uh, D of F at P. So this one. So all that. So you know this notation actually defined a linear map. And uh, since, uh, so now one thing I will tell you that uh, here basically we use the concept of uh, sum and difference and the norm. So this definition can be used for any norm linear space basically. So in general, so here generalize. So you can generalize this. Like for norm linear space, norm linear spaces. If you have two maps between two norm linear spaces, then you can define. Actually, you can uh, generalize the definition. There, you can define also the derivative of a function. Okay. Now, uh, now here the idea that um, okay, All right. So. So see the question that since linear map is totally determined uh, when uh, we consider two bases of codomain and domain. So therefore natural question arises. So before, so how the matrix of uh, differentiable at a point P is uh, uh, actually, uh, actually looking. So that we will uh, see here. So, so before do this, let me define here partial derivative. So let uh, f is a function, f is a function from u subset of Rn to Rm, where f h component wise writing, let's say, f1, f2 dot dot, f of m component it is. So each fi function from, you know, Rn to Rn to R. Right. So, so now uh, that uh, let me define here. So, del f i del x j at a point, let's say p, the definition, the change of this is basically the change of the function, the the component f i. 
So fi of p plus t of ej vector along ej vector minus fi of p divided by t. So this is the definition. So limit you have to put here. Of course, that uh, you need a limit that. So t tends to zero. So this is the definition of called the partial derivative of f i at the point t with respect to the variable x j. Okay. So now, now it is theorem that uh, right. So okay. So clear here. This is clear that f i. Of course, e j is nothing but 0, 0, dot, 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 1, 0, dot, 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 0. So this is in the jth place. So it is in, of course, I have to write here, it is in Rn. So it is the elements of standard basis. So now theorem that, uh, this is the theorem. If f equals to f1 f2 dot dot fm it is a map from u subset of rn to rm with uh, p belongs to u and uh, f is uh, differentiable at p then then del of fi del of xj at p exist and d of f at p the matrix with respect to you know the beta and beta dash is given by del of fi del of xj at p and this of course i have to write down here what is beta so beta dash beta is the standard basis of Beta is a standard basis of uh, Rn and uh, beta test is standard basis of Rn. So this is the day. So basically the definition of a function differential of a function from open subset of Rn to Rn. Now we'll see example. So example, and it's a very useful thing that, uh, so let's say we have a function f from, let's say, I'm taking from R2 to R, R2 is given by, let's say, R2 to R3, of course, by, f of here i am taking x comma y <coughs> f taking x y where it is taking let's say x square y square plus x y and then two to the power let's say x so it has three components so here f1 is what f1 is basically x square function what is f2 f2 is y square plus x y and what is f3 f3 is 2 to the power x <coughs> right so now uh, you know if we try to write down the derivative so df at a point p the matrix will be what of course we are taking the standard basis so it will be basically del of f1 with respect to the variable x del of f1 so or if so yeah, F2, taking two with respect to variable X. So, oh, okay, okay. F1 with respect to X, so F1 with respect to Y. Now F2 with respect to X, F2 with respect to Y. F3 with respect to X, F3 with respect to Y. So this is a, 3 by 2 cross matrix. So how it is defined? So f1 with respect to x, if you take derivative of this, so then 2x. Derivative of f1 with respect to y, this is 0. Y is here x is constant. Now f2 with respect to x, it is nothing but y. 
and f2 with respect to y it will be 2y plus x now f3 with respect to x it is nothing but that uh, we can say it is 2 to the power x into ln 2 and here 0 so this is the derivative of course where p is the point x comma y if you take p in particular 1 comma 0 in the place x put 1 and in the place y put 0 so therefore you know you can think if you have a function from from now we will think differential of a function means a linear map from rn to rn so that way we will think from now right so yeah okay okay so that's all for today so we'll discuss in the next video in the new different topics so thank you